So this video is a summary of the AQA electricity topic. And what we have in electrical circuits are a load of small electrical components. And what we need to do is we need to draw out circuits. And to help us with this, we have some circuit symbols. So some of these might be common from before, but there's a few extra ones, things like light dependent resistors, diodes, and so on, that it's worth just spending the time memorizing what all of these stand for. And the reason for this is it allows us to draw circuits really simply. Now, in the simplest case, we might have a power supply, so a cell. Uh, we might have an ammeter, and you always put the ammeter in series. Uh, and this is connected to maybe a lamp. And when the circuit is connected, it starts shining. We can also use a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across a component. So it's always worth remembering that ammeters go in series and voltmeters go in parallel. So what we have here is our really, really simple circuit. Now for this one here, uh, what we can think about is the rate of flow of charged particles around the circuit. That's what tra is transferring the energy from the cell, in this case, to the lamp. And we've got to remember that electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. Now, one of the equations we can use is that Q is equal to I times T. Now, somewhat confusingly, uh, we use Q as a symbol for charge, and charge is measured in coulombs. We use I for the current. This is like the intensity of current. And we measure the current in the unit of the amp. And then time we measure in seconds. And really what electric current is, is a flow of electric charge. And in a circuit like this, where we have maybe a DC supply, so it's a direct current, we've got the flow of electrons in the wires. Now we can also think of this electric current which is going through a component. It depends upon the potential difference across it, V, and also the resistance of that component. Effectively, we're going to have a bigger current flowing if you've got a bigger potential difference, but if you have a bigger resistance, that reduces the current. And what we have here is V stands for our potential difference, and this is measured in volts. R is the resistance measured in ohms, and then once again, the current is measured in amps. Sometimes a more useful equation is V equals I times R, and you can apply this to any part of the circuit. If you know the potential difference and the resistance, you can then work out the current that is flowing. But when it comes to resistance, we need to look at the resistance of certain components. And we can set up a simple circuit a bit like this. And what we have is a power supply, we have a variable resistor, and this, allows, this then allows us to change the current and the potential difference across a component. And we can do this for the following things. And we need to look at the characteristics of resistors, lamps, and diodes. Now, if we have a resistor, what we find is when we plot uh, values of current and potential difference, we get a straight line that goes through the origin. And what this means is that as you have a greater potential difference, you've got a greater current that flows, and that's because the resistance is constant. In actual fact, this is a great example of something called an ohmic conductor. And provided this stays at the same temperature, the current is going to be proportional to the potential difference. If, however, you have a filament lamp, this isn't an ohmic conductor, and what we find is we get a graph that looks a bit like this. What that means is, as this gets hotter and hotter and gives out more light, the resistance increases. So this one here, you've got a changing resistance for this light bulb. If you have a diode, on the other hand, the whole point in a diode is it works a bit like a one-way valve and it only lets the current flow in one direction, so we get a graph like this. Effectively, if you've got a negative potential difference, the value of current is zero, but when you have a high potential difference, loads of current can flow through. And this really allows us to control the way that uh, current flows in a circuit. Now, there are two other components that we can investigate. Uh, one of them is a light dependent resistor. And if we look at the resistance and the amount of light intensity, with an LDR, when we increase the light intensity, the resistance decreases. And the same kind of thing happens when we have a thermistor. So a thermistor is a thermal resistor. Once again, if we have the resistance on this axis of the graph and we look at the temperature on this axis, as we heat this up, the resistance goes down. And these two components can be used for all sorts of applications where maybe these can be used to sense something. So if it gets too hot or gets too dark, we can use this to turn on other parts of an electrical circuit. Now, there are two main categories of circuits. We've got series circuits and parallel circuits. 
In a series circuit, we have one thing after another. In a parallel, we have separate loops, and there's different ways for the electricity to flow. Now, in a series circuit, if we were to look at the value of the current down here in this part of the circuit, we'd find that it's the same value as the current here and the same value as the current up there. So in a series circuit, what happens is I1 is equal to I2, which equals I3. We have the same current around the whole circuit. In a parallel circuit, if we were to look at I1, which is flowing down here, and we looked at I2, and we looked at I3, so that's the current through each resistor, what we find is that the current splits at this junction, and what we find here is that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So in a parallel circuit, we have a different current in each part of the loop. But if we were to look at the potential difference, say we had a potential difference of V1 across the cell, and we compared that to V2 and V3, that's the potential difference across these two resistors, what we find is that this potential difference is split between the components. So V1 is equal to V2 plus V3. In this circuit, however, if we've got V1 here, V2 and V3, we find that the potential difference across each loop of this parallel circuit is the same. So here we find that V1 is equal to V2, which is equal to V3. So potential difference around any loop in a parallel circuit is going to be the same. Now when it comes to looking at resistance, if we have resistor R1 and R2, in a series circuit, their total resistance is going to be equal to R1 plus R2. Effectively, the more resistors we have in the circuit, the bigger the total resistance. But in a parallel circuit, if we had R1 and R2 now in parallel, there's effectively more ways for the current to flow. So the more resistors you have here, the lower their total combined resistance. Now you don't need to calculate it, but you need to know that the total resistance is going to be less than the value of R1, and also that total resistance is going to be less than the value of R2. So now we know a bit more about uh, the way that current and potential difference um, occur in a series and parallel circuits. We know we've got some of the other equations. We can also look at the electrical power. So this is the amount of energy transferred per second. And what we can say is that the power is equal to the potential difference times the current. Now again, we measure our potential difference V in volts, our current in amps, and we measure our power in watts. That's the amount of joules per second that are transferred. So effectively, if you've got a component with a bigger current flowing through it and a bigger potential difference, it's going to transfer more energy per second. But sometimes we might not know the potential difference. And the other equation we can use is P is equal to I squared R. So we can also work out the power, capital P, is equal to the current squared times the resistance. Now, again, you've got to remember that energy is going to be equal to power times time. And another way of looking at the energy transferred is equal to QV. So this is Q, which is a charge in coulombs, potential difference in volts. And this then gives our energy transferred in joules. So there's a whole load of different equations that you need to be familiar with that you can then apply to circuits. Now, so far, we've been looking at direct current, which flows one way around the circuit. But then the, there's another type of circuit which uses alternating current. This is the kind of thing that you might have in a household appliance where you plug something into the mains. And the UK mains is 230 volts, and it's got a frequency, which is, means there's 50 cycles per second. If we were to look at this on a graph, this means that sometimes you've got a positive value and sometimes it's negative. And this means that the current flows one way, then the other, 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 really, really quickly. Now, um, this is used in normal kind of household appliances. And what we often have is this three core cable. So we have three different wires in the core of that cable. So the brown wire provides the alternating potential difference from the supply. The neutral wire completes the circuit, and it's the difference between the potential difference here that causes uh, effectively that current to flow. And then finally, you've got this green and yellow wire, which is called the earth wire. And this is a safety wire that means if there's a fault in the system, this carries the, the, any electricity back to the earth rather than going through your body, as it says over here. So you need to remember some of these facts about an alternating supply, especially the household supply that we have in the UK. Now the other thing that means that AC is really useful is it allows us 
allows us to transfer energy over large distances or transfer electricity over large distances by using the national grid. Now, where can I put this? Just down here. So the national grid is a system of cables and transformers that link power stations to consumers. And what you have in a transformer is you have two coils of wire, the primary and the secondary, and these are wrapped around an iron core. Now, when you have an alternating supply in one, it causes there to be an alternating supply in the other. And this allows us to massively increase the potential difference, but also decrease the current. And this reduces energy losses in our power supply. So you need to know a bit about the national grid and how we have step-up transformers, which increase the voltage, or we also have step-down transformers, which decrease the voltage. And finally, we have static electricity. Now, this is often caused if you have an insulator and maybe you rub it against another insulator. What happens then is that some of the electrons are transferred from one to the other. So that means if some electrons are transferred from this to this by the rubbing action, this thing becomes more negative, while this thing here now has an overall positive charge. And if you then separate these two things, these two things are going to have a force acting on each other. So in this case, there's going to be an attractive force, but if they had the same charge, they'd then be repulsive. And if we had maybe a charged sphere, and maybe this one had a positive charge, we can look at the region around it. And in the region around it where other charged objects experience the force, we say that this is an electric field. And if we were to draw the field lines around this positive charge here, they'd all be pointing away from it. Effectively, that's the direction that if you had a positive charge and you put it here, which way would it move? Well, this would be repelled. And what we find is that the electric charge is stronger near the surface. So that's it. That's AQA electricity. We've got different circuit components and how they work in both series and parallel circuits, loads of equations, as well as information that you need to understand about an alternating supply.